whether it's relying on seagrass to gauge water health or studying how fish food affects water quality. Singapore's aquaculture sector is urging local fish farms to explore science-based solutions to manage challenges. And the industry is getting a bit of help from counterparts down under. Chloe Chu reports from Australia. This blade of seagrass may hold the answer to restoring ocean habitats. Researchers at universities and fish farms across Australia are studying how it provides food and shelter to marine life to use it as a barometer of water quality. The health of the seagrass in the, in the places that we farm is the most important metric um, in terms of understanding the impact of our farming um, and so we um, conduct uh, you know, sort of ongoing and, and regular monitoring of the environment. Um, we also make sure that we um, fallow locations regularly to avoid um, any impacts. The fish farm is located on the Spencer Gulf in southern Australia, more than 5,000 kilometres from Singapore. The Spencer Gulf stretches some 22,000 kilometres square and is home to several fish, oyster and seaweed farms. But even though Singapore doesn't have the luxury of this kind of space and the water conditions are different, there are still certain sustainability measures that can be adopted. And that's what these Singapore delegates are doing, looking to Australia's best practices to adapt them back home. Singapore's Barramundi Group is seeking a deeper understanding of how water quality is affected by the way fish in its farm are fed. So having the fish being fed with flo floating feed means that a lot of that feed does not come down the water column and then uh, if it's uneaten, uh, it pollutes the benthic layer and the seafloor. And that is something that we're very, very particular about. We do a lot of tests uh, internally, uh, doing sediment testing for built-up of uh, nutrients at least a few times a year. Academic and conservationist To Tai Chong says Singapore needs a lot more research before it dives into developing its aquaculture sector to study issues like how many fish an area of water can best carry. It's also very crucial that we start looking at what is suitable for Singapore. For example, in clean waters like Australia, uh, that crank capacity of the farms may work for their context, but in Singapore's context, the water quality is vastly different and we are in a tropical area, uh, then that would change the entire um, equation of how the carrying capacity might be calculated. Research is at the heart of Australia's aquaculture sector, currently estimated at US $2.5 billion. But it's collaboration that's needed to answer the big questions and tackle the big challenges. What we're finding in Australia is that a lot of the funding model has now moved and evolved towards getting contribution from the industry and from government and from the university. So we typically refer to a core design approach where the, the important questions, the priorities can be brought up by the industry. The industry have identified questions that they need answered and then they collaborate with government and with the universities to try to address these questions and solve some of these important uh, issues. Answers that Professor Huvinia's team at Flinders University hopes to answer from the very place where Australia's plan to grow its blue economy was born. Here, scientists helped formulate a national strategy for the sustainable use of ocean resources. But it was an effort that brought industry, government and academia together. And now a strategy that Singapore's budding aquaculture industry is looking to learn from. Chloe Chu, CNA, Adelaide. But it doesn't end at collaboration. The next and final episode of this four-part series will look at how legislation can level the playing field for fish farmers. That's tomorrow on Singapore Tonight.